Hi, my name is Kyle Law, and I'm a technical support specialist here at Profound Logic Software. And today I want to show you my top 10 tricks that will make your life easier when using the Visual Designer. Number 1. By now, we're all familiar with the ability to select a widget and seeing a list of its properties that we in the bottom right hand of the screen here, which we can then edit to modify the widget. But did you know, we actually offer a shortcut to let you quickly edit the most visible property of the widget? For things like uh, buttons and labels here, simply double clicking will open up the text on that button and I can just edit it right here in the canvas. After doing that, you can see the values modified in the properties window here. I can do this for multiple widgets for things like the tab panel on the different tabs I can double click and just edit the names of the tabs right here from the canvas for things like our panel widgets I can go ahead and do the same and just edit the title there including our grid widgets does the same on top of that for different widgets we'll see different results so for like a bound field or this bound text box Double clicking on that will actually open up the binding dialog where I can change what, pro, uh, what variable I have these widgets bound to. And on top of that, you can even go ahead and double click record format names and change them directly from here. But what's also really impressive about this shortcut is that it will do different things depending on how the widget is configured. So down here I have two of these wrapping text field widgets. The one on the right just has the default text that comes with it. Double clicking it lets me edit and when we go into the properties of it under the HTML we can see what I added was now in the HTML property. But for this one over here it's bound to a program field and so if I double click on this one, it's gonna instead bring up the binding dialog for me to change it like this. So this shortcut is really great for getting your screen visually looking the way you want it to look. That way you can spend the time needed to work on the backend properties and all this, the very specifics of your screen. Number two. Now we all know if I select a widget on the screen, a list of its properties are going to show up in this panel down here. But this list of properties can grow to be very long, and if I'm looking for a specific property, it can be difficult to find. So what we can do is we can actually search through this list of properties, and it's simply by typing in this text box right here. So if I wanted to find the property, say, CSS class, here it is right here. I've already just typed in CSS and I got my three properties right here that I wanted to edit. In addition to that though, you can see all of these properties are sorted into these categories. So when I'm doing something like say on my grid and I want to change the database driven settings for it, it'd be nice to be able to see all of the settings inside a specific category. And luckily we actually can do that. I just need to type in a special character at the beginning of my search term, the plus sign here, and then I can start searching for the category name. So I'm going to type in grid data, and now instead of me showing specific properties that say grid data, I'm actually shown the entire category called grid data. And now I can go in here and modify my data driven properties of my grid. In addition to that though, we have multiple views of this properties window. Right now it's set to all, so I see every single property for my grid here. But a lot of these I really don't need to see. I'm not interested in changing the font in any way. I'm, I'm okay with the default font or something like that. But I know that I want to quickly make an edit to something I've already modified, say like the column headings or a CSS class as you saw that was set. What I can then do is change my actual view of this properties window instead of it showing all properties to only show the properties that are set. 
As you can see, all the properties that did not have a value for them, like those font properties, no longer appear in my properties window. And I can quickly modify the set values for my widget in this view. Number three. Now you may have picked this up from the last tip, but in addition to being able to copy and paste record formats, we can also copy and paste widgets. So what's nice about this copy and paste of widgets is it actually maintains all the different values that I've already applied to that widget. So this clear button is actually one of these cancel buttons I just renamed to say clear. And if I were to copy this by say right clicking and selecting the copy option, I can then use control V and I can just paste it right back onto my screen. Now this also works with the last tip in a sense that I can say lock this in place and I wanted to make a new tab on this screen, but it's going to be very close to this one. I can actually group up all of these widgets real quick, use control C instead of the right click to copy it and just paste them right onto this new tab panel I just made. In addition to that, I can actually paste them into other designers with different screens. Number four. This next tip is actually a two for one that if you can master these techniques will greatly increase the speed at which you can modify your display files. The first part is similar to how we can right click on the properties of our widgets to gain additional options. We can also right click on our widgets themselves to give us additional things we can do to them. So in this case, I can do something like remove a widget, I can hide it, or I can even change the type of widget it is. So I can change this into a date field, or perhaps I can change it into a text box. So there's many different options I can do on this right click menu, like moving something to the back of the screen so it's not visible anymore, moving something to the front of the screen so it's now visible. And this is very useful for making quick edits to my screens to these different widgets. The next thing that would actually be very, very useful is being able to click and drag to select multiple widgets. And this is actually doable, but on this screen here, they're all contained inside this tab panel. So if I try to click and drag, it's just going to move the, mid the widgets around, the move the tab panel around with all the widgets inside it. So I'm actually going to take advantage of another option on my right click menu here, which is called lock in place. Now my tab panel is locked in its position on the screen. I can't modify that with the mouse anymore. So this allows me to now select and drag over the top of my tab panel here. And I can select all of these widgets at the same time, which I can now then right click and remove them all at once. Number five. This next tip is for a feature that's actually brand new to Profound UI version 6. On the left panel here, you can see we added a new Files tab. Clicking on this tab reveals this nice file tree explorer that shows all the documents listed under the htdocs folder for my installed instance. Using this file explorer, I can actually open up these files and edit them directly in the designer. So I can open things like HTML files, CSS files, or even JavaScript files. And now that they're open up in this new tab in my designer, I can go ahead and make my modifications, add some JavaScript to this, and I can save this file directly back to my IFS. Now that it's saved, I can go ahead and add that into my projects and I don't need to open a separate editor to modify these files anymore. Number six. This next tip is very similar to the previous one, but instead of looking at the record formats panel, we're actually gonna look at the elements panel just next to it. This panel gives us this nice graphical layout of how all the widgets are arranged on our screen. Each of these indentations signifies that this widget is now contained within the one above it. This panel is very useful 
for editing widgets that it makes it very difficult for me to click on with inside our canvas here. For example, if my widget has a negative left value that is large enough that I can't see it because it's off the side of my canvas here, I can still find it in this elements panel and I can modify its properties. So in here, I have a widget with a negative left value. If I go ahead and modify that to be something positive, I can now see it on my screen and I'd be able to edit it. In addition to that, I can actually use this elements panel to arrange which layouts my, uh, my widgets are in. So if I go ahead and click this graphical button and I'm dragging it, I can drag it to be inside this layout too. And now it's contained within that layout too. So this graphical elements panel is very useful for making minor edits that you can't do with the mouse clicks just because stuff is so close together and it takes this insane precision that is unable that you're unable to do with just a mouse cursor. In addition to that, in this example here, I have a layout that actually contains my entire screen here. So if I wanted a widget that's not inside of that layout, it would be very, very difficult to do so. Luckily for me, this elements panel has this button up here. It's called move to main canvas. If I select my graphic uh, button here that I was messing around with, I can use the button to now move it to the main canvas. And if I go and find it here, you can see it has no indentations. Therefore, it's not contained inside of any layout. Number seven. This tip is great when you need to make large modifications to your display files, or perhaps you just want to try out an alternative layout for the screen. In this tip, we're going to go ahead and look at the record formats panel up here. This is where we can maintain and modify our record formats for our display file. We're given several options like creating a new record format, removing them, renaming them to something else, or I can even move them in the order they appear in the list. But what I think is the most important feature of this record formats panel is this button right here. This lets me copy my entire record format, and then I can go ahead and paste that either into this display file or others. And when I do that, I now have an exact copy of that record format I had above. Except for this one, I can go ahead and start modifying and move my stuff around and see how I think it would look better without actually changing the way the original record format looks. This is very useful when you need to modify your record formats or if you need to make screens that look very similar, you can do this pretty, pretty quickly by just copying the record format back and forth. Number eight. This next tip is another one of these right click parameter options. So on widgets like my grid here, which can be database driven, you can look over here in my properties and you can see where I have the selection criteria, which helps me modify the SQL statement. So using this parameter, you can see I have these question marks inside my statement here. And these are what we call parameter markers and they act very much like variables. So this is going to be building my SQL statement and later on I can fill in these question marks with a value. So to do that, we use the parameter value property down here. Now, normally when you come to the screen, you're only going to see one parameter value um, property here, but I have listed three question marks in my statement. So for me to be able to add additional values into these additional question mark parameter markers here, I'm going to need to have additional parameter values. And to do that, I simply need to just right click and select this option here to add another parameter value. I now have my parameter value three, two, and I'll add my parameter value three. Now I can put in values here that will fill in for the additional two parameter markers in my SQL statement. Now this is not the only property that has these parameter value or that has this ability to add a copy of itself. Additionally, 
on all of our widgets, we have CSS class markers that you can add to the widget. So in this one, which is our new blueprint widget, we have two already that's built in here. But if I wanted to add a third one, it's simply right click and add another CSS class. Additionally to that, for record formats, we actually have these properties that allow you to link external JavaScript and external CSS files to our record format. The problem with this though is what if I wanted to link two external JavaScript files? Well, yet again, simply all I need to do is add that parameter, that property to my record format. Number nine. Now I'm sure most of you know, when you select a widget on the screen, a list of its properties open up down here and where you can go ahead and modify that widget to your liking. I'm sure most of you also know for certain properties, we offer these little buttons on the side that let, well, they'll do different things depending on the property you're trying to edit. For a JavaScript event like the onClick event, it opens up this editor where I can go ahead and type in all the JavaScript I, I need. For things like the image source property though, clicking on these buttons will instead open up this file viewer where I can select the file that I want for the image. But if I wanted to actually edit the, the path directly, I would need to type into this little text box, which can be troublesome and annoying. Luckily, most of our pro properties actually allow you to open them in an editor. So if I right click on the property, I can go ahead and open this editor. And now just like the JavaScript event, I have access to the full path that I'm using here in a large window that I can resize and move around. This is full useful for properties that don't have that button that lets me open it up like the value or the description or for other properties that have different alternative boxes that open up when I press that button. So for a combo box, we have this dialog that lets you select the options in that combo box, but we can also offer these options as a comma separated list. So I can right click and open it in the editor. And now I have access to that list where I can go ahead and add new options to that combo box. Number 10. This first tip is useful for finding that display file you need to make those changes to. For some people, they can have hundreds, maybe thousands of display files in a single library. So in this library I have here, you can open it up and I can see that I have maybe 20 or 30 display files in here. It's not a huge amount, but it can still make it difficult to find the one I'm looking for. So instead, I can filter the results when I open that search icon. I'm gonna type in the keyword here, prod, and I'm gonna add an asterisk here. And now I'm gonna hit my search button. Now, all my display files that are showed are start with that prod that I typed into that field. And so for me to open the file I wanna open, I can click on it and select. It now fills in my member name and I'll just go ahead and open it. And here's my display file, ready to make those changes. And here we are at the end of the video. I just want to say thank you everyone for watching. And if you want to find more information, you can always visit our documents page or you can visit our blog post where we share tips on making screens in the visual designer. Or you can even send a message in to support and you might get a response from yours truly. As a quick bonus tip for making it to the end of the video, I want to let you know that you don't always need to save your screen before you can compile it. Actually hitting that compile button will automatically save the screen for you. As you can see, I got a little asterisk here saying I have some changes on my screen. I'm going to hit, the, hit that compile button and it'll save my screen and the asterisk is gone. Thank you for watching.